Driving narrow streets in a rusty car Leading to the sea, think we're getting close We should take a pick, baby strike a pose Hey guys, boy do I have a show planned for you today and we're gonna end it by talking about my amazing recent ride on Cosmic Rewind. You're not gonna wanna miss that. But first things first, let's get to business. We're gonna be training you on weird travel acronyms that you should know as a travel agent. So if you wanna know important industry abbreviations, if you wanna know why skilled travel agents use these, and if you wanna seem like extra smart at your next travel conference, um, and you wanna hear about Cosmic Rewind. Stay tuned. That's what we're doing on the live stream today. Come take my hand. I will walk with you. I will let go till you say so. There isn't anything I wouldn't do. Want to make sure that you understand. All right, guys. Don't forget. Oh, look, you're looking at my notes. Hang on. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell over on YouTube because we bring you amazing content every single week to help you grow and supersize your travel businesses. And um, listen, we have so much great stuff coming. I just looked at our like production schedule for the next two months. So many fun things coming. So um, without further ado, let's get started. If you are new to the channel, please type an I'm new. Um, and I would love to welcome you to our community. And if you are new, you might not know who I am. My name is Cindy Williams. I am the CEO of Careers on Vacation. And I also have my own award-winning nationally recognized travel business. And I have been doing this for almost 30 years at this point. So <laughs> everything we train you on the channel is tested through my agency or the hundreds of brands that we support. Careers on Vacation, of course, helps uh, travel brands and travel agents and travel businesses all over the world launch, grow, and supersize their travel businesses. So Today, we're discussing weird tra travel acronyms that travel agents need to know. Sometimes I forget, and I'll be on a training call, like every Tuesday I do my mastermind calls, and I will say, oh, the CRM, or IATAN, or CLIA, or OAG, or ARC, or <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And I forget, because I've been using these terms for 30 years. So we actually have um, this really cool guide in Careers on Vacation, where we show people, right? Like here's all the travel acronyms. But what I want to do is spotlight a few of the top ones um, for you guys today. So we're going to do that. And then after we do that, because uh, listen, I have to tell you about Cosmic Rewind. I mean, when's the last time you bought like a souvenir mug and shirt to uh, commemorate your ride? I got to tell you about Cosmic Rewind. So we're going to do that at the end of the show. All right. So I want you to also, as we're going through the live stream today, if you know that what these stand for, I want you to put a red heart emoji in comments for each one that you know. So maybe take a little tally and then, and then put them in comments and put like a, like, like a shocked face for the ones that you didn't know, just so I can get an idea of where you guys are. No judgment either way. It's all good. Listen, we all had to learn this stuff at some point. So first things first. One, um, CRM. This is one that we use a lot. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management System. Basically, you know, put, put the travel industry aside. Any job you've ever worked for, they say, this is where we put the member information or this is the membership system. This is where the, wherever the client data goes in any industry, that's what's considered a CRM, right? So that's the term that we use, Customer Relationship Management System. And yes, you should absolutely be using one in your travel business. It's where all of your client information goes. It's where you keep a track record of everything. It's where you can document things about your clients, keep track of important things like frequent flyer numbers, preferences. You can send them emails from a, from a good CRM. And I'm not going to get into a big CRM like that. We have other videos on that, but there's ones that are better and, and, and not good and ones that are great. And so that's one of those things though. I just want you to know the acronym and yes, you should have one for your travel business. All right. The next one is GDS. I get this question all the time. Cindy, what's a GDS? Do I need a GDS? So this term is thrown out a lot more in more like corporate circles or in those of us who work on GDS system. So GDS stands for global distribution system. So these are things like, Amadeus, Saber, Worldspan, we used to be Apollo. Does anyone remember Apollo? You gotta really be like back in the day if you remember Apollo. 
this is the systems we use to train travel agents on. These are some of these are still around today. So, so corporate agents, more corporate use them. Um, and that's where we see it today, but you don't need a global distribution system to be what I would call a leisure agent in today's environment, because there's other ways to make bookings without having that cost. But that's what it stands for. It is an industry term because those systems, Amadeus, Sabre, Worldspan, Apollo, they were created by the airlines to manage the process of booking flights, cars, and other things within those GDS systems. And that used to be, it was almost like learning a foreign language. When I went to travel school way back in 1993, you had to learn a GDS system. And before you could ever work for a travel agency, they would say, which GDS system are you trained on? So that's not the environment today. You don't have to worry about it as much, but if you want to know the historical term, that's where GDS comes from. All right. Next one is one that you don't hear a ton anymore. And it came out of that GDS world to kind of piggyback on that, but it's a PNR. You guys know what a PNR is? PNR stands for personal name record. It is literally, I wish I could get like some footage somewhere of like the old accounts that we used to build. Like it literally looked like an Atari screen that we were building travel records on back in the day when I first started. But PNR was a personal name record. And you would have their name, you know, you'd have their information, their phone number, their address, all of that. And you would build in their flights or you would build in their car and there would be a section for notes very rudimentary by today's standards for sure. And we don't really refer to it as PNRs anymore because again, a lot of people are not using GDS systems, which is where that term comes from. But I thought that was a fun one to share with you guys. That's how a, mem a membership or customer data used to be organized um, back in the 90s, 2000s when we were working in GDS systems. All right, number three, this one is used. Um, in today's environment, ARC. Do you guys know what ARC is? ARC is the Airline Reporting Commission. So ARC um, maintains some certain standards in our industry. Um, you can actually become an ARC qualifier if you are running kind of a corporate agency and you, you do have a GDS and you do have, there are certain requirements that if you are um, IATAN uh, affiliated, we'll get into that in a second. You're like, what's IATAN? That's coming. I it's on the list, I promise. But uh, you can, I actually was a, an art qualifier and uh, because I, back in the day, corporate, I ran the travel division for Victoria's Secret of all things. The company I worked for, Victoria's Secret, outsourced it to us and I was the, um, head of the agency. And I had, because of that, I had to get, become, uh, are qualified. So back then they would fly you to like Florida or somewhere they were doing this. You had to go through five days of training. You had to take this really intense test and like literally like how to do tax breakdowns, how to hand write a ticket, all of that stuff. Um, so at any rate, that's where ARC comes from. They are still around, of course, the Airline Reporting Commission, and that's what it stands for. All right, next one you've probably heard of if you've been in the industry for a minute. It is ASTA, the American Society of Travel Agents. We love ASTA. They are advocates on behalf of the industry, careers on vacation. My company is an ASTA-affiliated travel school. So ASTA does a lot of advocacy. They do a lot of good work in the industry, and I am a big fan. But when you see ASTA stands for the American Society of Travel Agents, that's what uh, the abbreviation is. Whew, we're doing good here. I got a few more for you, and then I promise we're going to get to Cosmic Rewind. If you have any questions on these, by the way, pop a note down in comments. I'm happy to answer those at the end of the live stream. All right, fit. You might be like, not fit, like, oh, I'm working out today. I know I got my off the shoulder Jane Fonda kind of vibe going on today, but <laughs> we're not talking about health when we're talking about fit. Fit stands for a free and independent of a group tour. So it's basically when you are literally customizing a trip from start to finish. I'll give you an example. If you're doing, uh, someone's going to Europe and they want you to arrange their rail and then a boutique bed and breakfast, and you're literally putting together each component to create the trip versus a travel supplier putting it together for them. And sometimes travel suppliers do have like departments that will help you with FIT. So 
keep that in mind as well. But it, the tradition of it is really, it's more of that custom trip where you are plugging in all of the different pieces and it is not part of a group, right? It's not one of these big bus tours like Trafalgar or Globus where there's 50 or 100 people on a bus and you're all touring through Europe for three weeks. It is more of an independent experience that you're curating or customizing. So that's what, an, what we call an FIT. Some people shorten it to fit. Whatever you want to call it is good for me. Um, the next one is a fam trip. Everyone knows what fam trips are, right? If you don't, I get this question too, because I say it all the time, like, oh, I'm going on a fam trip. I'm going here. I'm going there. My agent, I'm sending here so-and-so on a fam trip. FAM is short for familiarization. And what a FAM trip is, is when a travel supplier wants you to come out and see their product, or they're putting on an event specific for travel agents, they wanna show off the product to you as the travel agent or in the travel industry because they want you to sell more of their product or be more versed on what the product is that they have to offer, we get things called FAM trips. So we shorten it to FAM because familiarization is just, who's got time to say that long word when you're going through your already busy day? But FAM trips are amazing. You definitely want to know that one. And as you get into the industry, if you're new or aspiring, FAM trips are back in full force, you guys. I have three emails in my inbox right now of travel suppliers inviting me to go to places for FAM trips or to come see their product and do different things. I can't get to all of them. Like I'm a mom with three kids, but usually I will pass that down to my agents or sometimes we have to say no. But I want you to know that they are back and that is an exciting thing for our industry, especially because the suppliers really want travel agents support during this post uh, pandemic time to help support and fill their rosters, which is no problem because everyone's traveling again in light of the recent announcements, which is very exciting. All right. Next one is AP. If you're Disney, think Disney AP. If you haven't heard Disney AP, it means annual pass holder, right? If I, I'm a Disney AP holder, right? I have an annual pass, but you'll see that verbiage on feeds like, I'm an AP, I'm an AP. And sometimes my new travel agents will go, what the heck is AP? What are they saying? <laughs> Just means they're an annual pass holder, which is great. That means they're very versed on the product. They know a lot about Disney and most of the time they're looking for those unique experiences. So working with an agent can kind of get them um, some great, amazing things or Disney Disney cruises or Di adventures by Disney or all the upsells and cross sells that pass holders would be more likely to buy. So know that AP if you want to really connect with that Disney demographic, right? All right, next one is CLIA, the Cruise Line International Association. So um, CLIA accredits agencies. Um, and so that's an important one to know. And you can also, if you have your CLIA card, a lot of the travel supp suppliers, if you have a CLIA card, you will then be eligible for things like fam trips or travel agent discounts or travel agents perks. They will ask, do you have a CLIA card or do you have my next acronym, which is an IATAN card? So um, again, CLIA is an association that accredits agencies or agents. The next one is IATAN, which is also an association that accredits agencies and agents. IATAN stands for the International Airlines Travel Agent Network. I've been a proud IATAN holder for many, many years. I, I wish I had my first IATAN because it would be so cute because I was like 19 years old. And so I could, I wish I would have kept them all like through the years. That would have been amazing because you do get like a new one every year. But at any rate, uh, it's another association where you can get uh, accredited. So no IATAN, that's an important too. And last but not least, COV. Do you guys know what COV stands for? Extra gold stars. I'm going to put my, let's see, do I have confetti here? Yes. Extra confetti. If you know that COV stands for careers on vacation. A lot of times you guys are seeing on feeds because at this point um, I've trained a over a th thousands of travel agents in my career. We've certified hundreds and hundreds of travel agents Every single year, we certify that many through our Careers on Vacation program. Both new and experienced agents can get certified. So a lot of times on feeds, you'll see, oh, well, I'm certified through COV or I'm a, C I'm a COV grad. And you'll see that out on the lot of travel agent feeds. COV is short for Careers on Vacation. So um, awesome. Now we're going to talk about two things. One, first, if you are thinking about getting into the industry or if you're like, wow, that was a lot of terms, that literally was like one of the five pages of acronyms we give you in the Cruise on Vacation program because believe it or not, there's so many more. But I wanted to kind of give you guys some of the heavy hit ones. But if you are new into the industry, please go over and check out our travel masterclass. You can go to cruiseonvacation.com slash masterclass to grab that. It's a totally free one hour class. If you're learning about the industry or deciding if it's for you, that is a great place to start. 
and also so you can avoid a lot of the pitfalls that are out there in the world. But, um, I want to also let you guys know, I'm going to cosmic rewinds coming up next, but before I forget, Careers on Vacation is so booked, you guys. If you have been thinking about pulling the trigger on this for a while, please do not hesitate. Get those, get on the phone with my enrollment team to map out your goals. That's what we do during that discovery process. It is not a salesy process at all. There is no pressure. It literally is just to understand your goals and if we can help you. And at the end of the call, you will have really good clarity on what you need to do, whether you work with us or not. Um, but Careers on Vacation has been booked. This has been our busiest year ever. And um, we are waitlisted right now. So please get into the waitlist. Go visit at cruiseonvacation.com slash ready now. And you get access, of course, to our amazing membership site, which is uh, uh, forever ac forever access, right? It's a, it's a access lifetime access for the lifetime of the program that you get. You get to work with my amazing team. And you guys, we are filming close to our 200th case study at this point. They're not even all loaded up on YouTube. So check that out if you want more information and learn about the types of results we're getting for people. It is phenomenal. Such a good time to be in the travel industry. And we'd be honored to help you if that is if you're ready for that on your journey. All right, let's talk Cosmic Rewind, you guys. All right, I have to preface this. I'm going to preface this by saying... Um, when I was in my thirties, like mid thirties, I went to Astro World and I rode the Batman ride and I got, um, a concussion, like legitimately a concussion. I was sick in bed for like three, four days. It was traumatic. And since I've had that injury, I really have a hard time riding roller coasters, um, because I get really nauseous. I'm like, well, am I going to pass out? Um, so I don't ride roller coasters a ton. I'm going to preface it because this, my experience on Cosmic Rewind will probably not be like your experience if you never had a concussion or you don't have the same, you know, situation I have going on. So I'm going to preface it with that. You should not be scared to ride it. I freaking loved it. Um, so let me walk you through. We, we got, you know, we got to the park. We actually got the one o'clock uh, you know, when you log in and do the virtual pass or whatever, we actually got it at one o'clock, which has never happened to me. Like to this day, I still haven't even rode rise of the resistance because I could never get a pass for it. But magically our whole family got a pass and I'm like, oh my gosh, should I ride all day? I was worried. Like, should I ride it? I don't know. Am I going to get sick? Am I going to feel nauseous? So I'm like, I got to do it. And also another thing to know about me, like when I was 10 years old, there's not, I wanted to be astronaut. Like I wanted to go to space. I was obsessed with space, all the things. So I'm like, ah, oh, the inner kid in me was like, you got to do it. Like suck it up. You got to do it. Right. So we go through the queue and I'm like nervous. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm watching people get on and I'm like, okay, they don't show you any of the ride. I can't hear, you know, I'm just like in a daze. I get on Cosmic Rewind and we had, we have five in our family. So I was sitting with, I volunteered to sit with a stranger so my kids could be together and my, and my husband could be with my daughter. Anyway, I, I asked the lady, I'm like, how's this ride? You rode this before? Like, I'm nervous. She's like, oh yeah, it's my third time. She goes, it's pretty intense. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm so nervous. She's like, you're going to be fine. Okay. So I don't even know how to describe this roller coaster because I, back in the day, I used to ride roller coasters all the time. Like, I don't even, I can't, there's so hard, it's hard to find words, but I will say it is the mo is the best roller coaster I've ever been on in my life. I literally was like laughing so hard. Like it was spinning. So first of all, it goes in and then it takes off backwards. And then the, the carts kind of go independent from each other. So it's not like a straight roller coaster. And it was spinning like so fast, like the spit was flying out of my mouth and flying back on my face. And I'm like, what is happening right now? And it was just like, visually, you cannot even like, your brain cannot comprehend what is happening in, in while your body is moving a totally like different direction. It's so disorienting, but it was so cool. Like the music and the other thing about it is it is the smoothest roller coaster. Like I can't really ride Space Mountain anymore because I always feel as, I always feel like it jacks up my back. So I don't ride some of those like clunky ones. And even, you know, I can ride Thunder, Thunder Mountain. That doesn't give me a problem. But Space Mountain kind of gives me a little back problem. This one is the smoothest, like no body pain at all um, for someone who sometimes that is a challenge with. But you guys, we ride the ride. So like when I was riding, I was like, 
I feel so sick, but this is the coolest thing I've ever done. And it really was like, I got off that ride and I'm like, I'm definitely feel like I'm going to puke. I was like walking. My husband's like, are you okay? I'm like, I don't know, but that was awesome. Have you ever gotten off a ride and you're like, yeah, that was so awesome. Like that's how you feel inside getting off a cosmic rewind. Even though I felt nauseous, even though I was sick, even though I thought I might pass out, I was like, yeah, so good, right? My husband's like, we got to go to the gift shop. So immediately my husband goes and buys this coffee mug, which I stole for this morning. So cute, right? And I'm like, I'm going to get the shirt, which by the way, how cute is the shirt? It's so cute. Um, I did all the things and then I immediately had to go sit down for like an hour. <laughs> I was so dizzy. And then I was having dizzy like spells every time I got up for the next three days. But again, remember, I had the con concussion situation. I don't do roller coasters well. I cannot ride um, like... Uh, What's the other one? Mission space. I cannot write mission space even on like the easy one. It makes me totally sick. So I do not have a high tolerance. I wish I could ride it again. I don't think I can put my body through that from a dizziness perspective, but I am so glad I did it. It was the coolest thing ever. If you guys get the chance to ride Cosmic Rewind, 1000%, please ride it. It is so cool. All right. I'm going to check uh, the feed over here on Facebook and uh, Instagram or I'm sorry, Facebook and YouTube, just to see if you guys have any questions for me. And by the way, have you guys ridden uh, Cosmic Rewind? Tell me um, what you guys' experience has been uh, riding it. So crazy. Hey, Savannah, good morning. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Lee. Hey, Brenda. So many uh, of you guys. <laughs> I know you guys are all laughing at me. It's all good. Totally fine. I love it. Well, it looks like a, a lot of uh, a little hearts and things you guys are putting in, but no questions for today. So I guess I definitely explained the travel acronyms. Well, I hope you liked my fun story on Cosmic Rewind. I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'm so glad to be back. I don't know if you guys heard I had COVID. Um, and like a week, week and a half ago. So I'm feeling so much better. Thank you for your words of encouragement for those of you who knew or saw that on my Instagram. If you're not already following me over there, we have a lot of fun stuff coming. If you want to see the behind the scenes of what I'm doing with all my travel brands, definitely check that out as well. Um, but thank you for your kind words. It's good to be back. Uh, live streams are going to be a little inconsistent through um, July and a little bit of August because we're here in Florida. So we're really doing a lot um, for our businesses out in the world, but I will get back to regular live streams. I promise a little bit more regularly, uh, mid August. Um, so I will see you soon. Keep tuning in and I will keep you posted always over on Instagram when I'm about to go live. So you guys have a great week. I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys. Cindy Williams here. If you like that last video, make sure you check out all of the other content on our channel. And if you want to follow along and travel with me around the world and see how I run my amazing travel brands and get some great tips on how to grow your own, make sure you check out that other content. I'm going to drop a couple videos here. Click those links. I'll see you next time.